are those who are against you. Proponents are those who are for you. Genesis 3, 8 and 10, we can read it together. The word of the Lord reads as following. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Then who? The man and his wife. The man and the wife are a team. Amen. I want to tell you this morning, I'm on your team. If you're on team Jesus, I'm on your team. If you're on team Jesus, now if you're trying to play two teams, we can't do that in the kingdom of God. We can't be in two teams. We can't be loyal to two. The Bible says you can only serve one master. We can't be, well, this one and that. No, Jesus is not going to compete with none of that. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. Somebody say, so I hid. And then verse uh, Matthew 26, 65 through 68, it says, then the high priest tore his clothes, speaking of Jesus. They tore Jesus' clothes, and they said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? They want to kill him. Look, now you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He's worthy of death, they answered. Man, 68. 68. No, well, 67. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. They punched him. This is Jesus. This is your Jesus. This is my Jesus. Others slapped him and said, prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you? Who hit you? Prophesy to us. Tell us where the blows coming from. Who hit you? And a proponent is someone that is sent to hurt you. And I heard the Holy Spirit tell me this week to ask you, where are the blows? Where are your blows? Where are your hits coming from? Who are those that are working against you? And this is a good word. Because I know we come to church and we want to hear all these wonderful things. But everything that comes out of God is wonderful. Where does the enemy get to you and hitting you? Uh, I'm talking about proponents. Somebody say proponents. That means my supporters, my helpers. Where are your hits coming from? Where do you keep falling where do you keep struggling? You might not even think you're being hit because sometimes you can get hit so much, you're, so, you're just used to it. You're used to the blows. But there is an area, boom, where the enemy, somehow, it's, he's getting through, but say, it's because I've allowed it. I know you don't want to say that, but the good news is if you've allowed it, you can stop it. We don't give the devil that much power because if he could get through, that means he could pass by God and trick God. The devil can't get passed by God. He only gives us as much authority as we allow him, and we should give him no authority. Right? So just say with me, where are my hits coming from? A proponent is a supporter. It's an advocate. It's your backing. Right now we're getting ready to go into voting here in San Antonio. And everybody's trying to gather their backing. Everybody's trying to get their supporters. Everybody's trying to see who's for me, who's with me, who's on my side. Vote. They're trying to get proponents. You know what I mean? They're trying to see who's on my side. I believe everything Jesus did in his life, concluded and finished on the cross, was to address any and every issue that you and I would go through. Anybody here have issues? Yeah. yeah. Jesus took it on the cross. Way before you were born, Jesus took it on the cross. For some of us, he had to use bigger nails than the others, but he took it on the cross. Amen. My wife constantly reminds me that I am a Mexican novella, personified, because my emotions are just real, you know. I was going to, I finally found the breaded, uh, what do they call them, chuck wagon patties. I grew up eating those uh, from Y'all remember warehouse groceries? Anybody here back in the day? No warehouse? Yeah, back in the day we had warehouse groceries, you know, just ghetto food. And I remember we, they would wrap up these breaded patties, cheap patties in plastic and styrofoam. And my mom would buy them and cook them a little bit, you know. Actually in high school because that, that was too luxurious when we were little. But she would buy them and I couldn't find them. Finally, uh, I was at an HEB and uh, I saw a mom who looked a little ghetto. Nah, just kidding. No. But I, I saw a... a, a one of the meat guys, he didn't know what I was talking about. But I saw a parent and I said, have you ever made these things called chuck wagon patties for your kids? 
And uh, she was like, I don't, they're like breaded patties, like, they're not fancy. They're just, and she goes, I think I know what you're talking about. So she took me where the meat man couldn't find it, and she showed me, this is what you're talking about? That's what I'm, a mom knows. A mom knows. Well, I've had them since, about two weeks. And one night, I had a late night craving, like I do almost every night. And my wife goes, what are you doing in the kitchen? I said, nothing. You know, and I always turn it, and I'm the victim. And I said, nobody feeds me in this house. And so I started heating up a pan real quick, just put a little bit of oil. And I was just about to throw those patties in, man. And there was no bread. The sermon is over. Ah, <laughs> I knew my enemy at that moment. I saw her sitting there popping popcorn in her mouth. <laughs> See, novella. That's why I said I'm novella. And I went up to her and I said, do you or do you not want to make this work now? But there wasn't any bread. I felt like she was my enemy that night. And she was not my proponent. But everything you and I have been through, Jesus took it on the cross. I know it's hard to fathom that, but he did. Your mental trips, nobody wants to look at it in me or anybody. He took them on the cross. Your lust battles, I relate. He took them on the cross. He took them. Insecurities, he took them on the cross. And sometimes he's very specific. He even tells us in the Bible how he took them on the cross. The Bible says things like uh, he was chastised or beat for our peace. That's how he took it on the cross. With every blow, it was so that you could have peace. So that means you have a right to have peace in your heart in Jesus Christ. It says for transgressions, he died for it. If you were sick, how did he take it on the cross? By his stripes. Every time they beat him, the Bible says every single stripe represented every single sickness you would endure. And he took it on the cross. Come on, y'all. Every struggle with your thoughts, Jesus took it on the cross. I believe that if Jesus conquered everything and he's inside of you, then he's called us to conquer everything. So say with me, so then how do these blows get to me? How do I keep getting hit? How is it that I keep getting hit? On and on, Jesus conquered it all and Jesus covered it all. Therefore, we need not live conquered by the enemy and, out, and go out feeling like we're not covered. Uh, so real quick, real quick, I want to establish this real quick. <clears throat> Jesus took hits you don't have to take. I'm, I know I already said that, but I'm going to keep saying Jesus took hits you don't have to take. Jesus took hits that you don't have to be getting up at night, panic attacks, and worrying. Jesus took poverty, a broke spirit, on the cross. Jesus took it all. The question is, do you really want to be set free, or are you comfortable in bondage? The blows that Satan sends us are the things that keep us from learning and growing in Jesus. So a few weeks ago, I asked you this. I asked you by the Spirit. I asked you, how easily do you get distracted? And I didn't just mean like right now, if a, a cup falls, you get distracted. How easily do you forget that you regress back? How easily do you do things that aren't in line with the Word of God? How easily do you get distracted? Today I ask you, how easily do you get offended? How easily do you get bothered? Because those are the punches Satan is sending so that you in the end will not focus on learning the lesson you need to learn to be stronger. And I don't know about any of you, but I want to be able to lay my head down when I die and while I'm alive every night, knowing Eric, Pastor Eric and Pastor Anthony and all of you, knowing that, you know what? Nobody controls me here. I have the mind of Jesus. And I will make good decisions. Come on, y'all. I will make good, even if everybody thinks I'm psychotic and a novella, I will make good decisions. Come on, y'all. Jesus took too many punches for me. So where are your punches coming from? So if Jesus took whippings for healing, and if Jesus took punches that appeared to come out of nowhere, and they said, who's punching you? The antithesis or the opposite of that is that he wants you to, be, to identify where are the punches coming from. Did you get that? Did you get that? The opposite of black is white. The opposite of up is down. The opposite of not knowing where the punches are, are knowing where the punches are. Jesus took the not knowing so that you could know. And when you know, what are you going to do now with what you know? You're going to give it again? Now that you know, you can block those punches. 
I tell you guys, every single Sunday you come to church, I'm giving you the answers for where Satan is going to punch you. Right, come up here, Laura. Laura is a punch expert. All right? Uh, I'm going to tell you that Laura is going to punch me on the, you can face me, on, the, on my right shoulder. Punch him on my right shoulder. Why couldn't she punch him on my right shoulder? I blocked her way before she even lifted up her head. I'm going to tell you that Laura's going to try to kick me in my stomach. Ah, no, it's just too high. She has a dress. <laughs> Laura is going to try to stab me. No, nah, just kidding. Laura is going to try to punch me on my left shoulder. Way before she punched me, I knew and anticipated the punch. Thank you. You can leave now. And I blocked it. Now, it would have been more interesting if as she punched me, I would have simultaneously blocked. But way before she punched me, I knew where she was going to punch me. So I just already was ready. This week and every day of your life, Satan has punches assigned for you. Tomorrow morning, he has some punches. As soon as you get out of here, there, Satan already has his fists and his demons. They got punches assigned for you. And every time you come and you hear a message, if it's about depression, that's what Satan wants to come at you with. If not now, later. And God has given you the block way before he has ever even sent the punch. So why are the punches getting through? Come on. Somebody say, why are the punches getting through? All right. If I'm single, why do men see me as an easy target? Why do women see me as somebody easy to manipulate? Why do they see a big man and go right at, beeline at him and say, do you want to buy Girl Scout cookies? <laughs> right? Tell your neighbor, get your block on. You should not be walking around punched. Tell us who punched you. Well, Jesus took those punches so I don't have to. But a lot of times we go throughout the week and we feel like Satan's punching bag. If it's through friends, we call them friends, right? If it's through acquaintances, employees, bosses, you feel like somebody's undercutting you behind the scene. They say it in front of my face, they're my friend, but behind this, I feel the blows. You know? Like I said, I don't have, I'm not going to take too much of your time. But again, how... Is how do you make sure that when Satan does come to attack you, don't waste your time getting offended. Just focus on what you're supposed to do for Jesus Christ. Know that God is your proponent. He is on your side. Know that you have opponents. You're going to have enemies. When you pick a side, there is no demilitarized zone. You're supposed to have enemies. And I say that again and again to emphasize that some people teach when you come to Christ, maybe, not, well, they had the understanding, some people, that all your problems are going to be gone. No, you're going to have problems. But now you have clear, real answers. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Come on, y'all. But here's my question. When the blows do get through to you, and they shouldn't have, how long is your recovery time? Somebody hurt your feelings? How long does Satan take time away from you because you got offended or you got wounded or you got hurt and it takes you about three weeks to shake. Three weeks you could have been advancing. One second is too much. I would say when people would say, uh, you were talking about me? Listen, if you were my enemy and I'm saved now, but you think I even want to waste any breath I have talking about you? You're arrogant. The last thing I want to do is think or talk about you. Lest it's too... Are we on camera? Never mind. <laughs> I've been around the block too long. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to say they know what I'm saying, but I understand. How long is your recovery time? How long is your recovery time? When Satan does get a blow through, can you shake it off and say, you know what, no, I'm not giving in to that. I forgive him. No, I'm not going to fall for that. Because then when I go back to class and I feel like my professor's working against me, I can't learn the new chapter because I'm so mad about the last chapter, how he treated me when I asked him some questions, then I'm losing all. And then I'm going to flunk the final. And in life, you're going to flunk the test. Yeah, because y'all didn't know I get mad at my professors. You know? I'd be like, man, how do you want me to get that? And you didn't even break it down, son. 
Tell your neighbor, what is your recovery time? How many nights have you gone to sleep angry when you could have gone to sleep and gotten over it? As a couple. Right? How many people have left churches because they didn't like something? Come on, yo. You had a good friendship and because they put mayonnaise instead of mustard in your sandwich, you let a good thing go because I love mustard, right? How many people walk away from an opportunity to grow because something hurt their feelings? God says, identify your punches because I took them blindly so that you could identify them. Say, why do you act this way, Conrad? Why? Yeah, they shouldn't treat you like that, but why do you give them power to control you when all they said was one thing and here you are rehearsing it over and over and you're wasting your time and they don't even remember what they told you. Say, I'm not going to waste time anymore. I'm not going to waste time. And no, but if I don't tell them something, I'm weak and my friends are going to say, and you're wasting your time. The real person you got to work on building up, right here. I tell my wife, I get mad at me. I don't like when people do things to me and I may get mad, but I get over that quick. But I get mad at me for, Conrad, why didn't you see that? Or why didn't you say that? That's why I'm so clear now when I talk to people. Because I don't want to walk away from a conversation and say, I should have told them. I'm just going to go ahead and let them know. And if I said something I shouldn't, then God's going to have to just bust me down and say, you shouldn't have said no, or you shouldn't have this. But you know. Right? So some of the blows come from Satan. But sometimes what you are rebuking as a satanic blow is also God giving you a spanking and saying, nope, you were wrong. You know, you were wrong. So now you have to discern where are the blows coming from. Because you might be saying, oh, it's Satan. And God might be saying, no, that was me. You need to be kind. I sent you a slap. Huh? COD, cash on delivery. Because it's going to cost you. <laughs> Remember that back in the day? <laughs> Some people may not know CODs no more. Man. It's like that man from the insurance commercial who says he doesn't rewind his DVDs when he returns them. He makes the next, next guy do it. Back in the day, you were baller, man. When you would have, a, a, you had all your videos, and then you had just, just the machine just to rewind. <laughs> right, we were ballers, right? We thought we were all bad in school because somebody had a tape, and oh, my tape messed up. We'd bust out the pencil with the eraser, and shh. We knew how to fix it. They don't do that anymore. Pastor Anthony puts his tape in his sit pencil away. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, where are the hits coming from? If it's Satan, how are they reaching you? If it's God's discipline, it's because he loves you. Don't call it the devil when it's God. Amen. So you got to identify. Is, Lord, are you trying to teach me something? And I'm punching up against you. Amen. Because here's another thing. Come up here, Sister Lara. Poor Sister Lara. Amen. You've heard me use this example. I'm going to punch, but you run into my punch. Back up. Run into my punch. And say, stop punching. Stop punching me. Am I punching her? No. You can leave now again. Right? But sometimes God is just trying to tell you, not here. Don't date her. Don't go there. Don't do that. And you keep running in and saying, why is God doing this to me? And God's like, you're running into my punch. Right? Come on, y'all. It's, it's, I can show you in the Bible. Goads were used to prod cows or animals, right? When they would get out of line, they would, you know, every now and then just prod them a little bit. You don't want to hurt them. And one day, Paul, he's killing Christians. And he has this vision. Jesus appears from heaven, bright light. It's not just a vision for him. But it makes him blind and not, well, it never says he was on a horse. But we put a horse in there, you know, in the whole story. But it, he falls on the ground. I didn't say he was on a horse, right? He falls on the ground. And Jesus tells him, Saul, why do you keep... Uh, cup hitting or pritting, uh, prodding against the gold. Why do you keep running into my gold? I'm not even poking you. You're running into it. And sometimes God may be telling us not to do something or live a certain way. And we're like, why doesn't God help me? No, no, no. You're working against the plan of God in your life. Tell your neighbor again, where are the blows coming from? If it's Satan, how are they getting to you? But if it's God, why aren't we listening? Right? Come on. If, I've, if, I've, if I've, the teacher already let me turn in. Y'all know I'm in school. One laid assignment and then I, I get mad because she didn't let me turn in the fifth one. How dare you? 
You call yourself a teacher? But I never see that I didn't get the idea. Come on, yeah. All men are bad. So all the five husbands that divorced you are bad. Nobody likes me, including the last seven bosses that fired you. It was not you. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. It's, it's quiet up in here. I just go. By new nature, 2 Corinthians, we know this 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold. Say that. Behold. behold. It means check this out. Whenever the Bible uses the word behold, he's saying pay a little more attention with your eyes. Look at this. He says, behold, all things have become new. But when you get a blow from Satan, you can't focus on the new. You focus on the old. That's how you know that a blow from Satan has come and gotten you. A proponent, an enemy has done this to you. And your proponents are telling you, just get over it, Norma. Just get over it, uh, Pastor Jeannie. Just get over it, Bishop. Just get... Your proponents are helping you get set free. And you don't know what I went through. And you're swinging at the help. And you're holding on to the hurt. You need to know where the blow's coming from. Right? Because not everybody who gives you everything you want is your friend. Amen? That means all those Snickers and cakes y'all gave me. You did this to me. <laughs> Are you listening? Focus on the new. Focus on the new even if it's painful. Focus on the new even if it gives you a, a throat, like a tight throat. Focus on the new, but, but don't stop growing. A proponent will help you grow. Somebody who's on your side will say, well, maybe they were right. Keep growing. Keep advancing. Don't listen. And if you're a pastor, don't listen to it. Just do it. People always say stuff. Just keep growing. And this and that. But look and this. And it, just keep growing. Hallelujah. Just keep growing. Let people talk. Keep growing. I know what I'm telling you because at the end of the day, when your enemies are gone and you don't have nobody to blame for no more, you're going to hate yourself. Keep growing. Uh, here's how you can tell two things that I'm closing that, some, that, that you have come under something has happened uh, the Bible said that when Adam had sinned and God came walking or he heard the voice of the Lord walking and the sound of the voice of the Lord coming through the garden what did he do my goodness this festival keeps coming up he hid uh, the Lord said beware of a hiding spirit when you have people who act like they're your proponents or they're for you but it sounds like they're hiding information from you that's not a proponent when all of a sudden we could talk open and all of a sudden I come and like I always come and you're hiding behind a bush or an excuse or a story and I can see it and smell it and then I ask you where are you because I play along with you but you know what's up and something's up and you act like nothing's up and you're trying to play the story and then you want me to believe. If we were really, you are really my support, there wouldn't be all these bushes between us. And if you were really my support, then you would get the chainsaw and cut the bushes off and expose me even if I got mad at you. Because we should be open. Somebody say, we should be open. We should be open with God. Are you a proponent of God? Are you for God? I'm for God. But people put up a lot of bushes, a lot of excuses, a lot of this and that, and God knows my heart. And, I was like, and you know what? That's right. God does know your heart. <laughs> He's just playing along. But He knows what you should have done. But He's for you. I thank God for all the times God has called me out. That the moment I couldn't see that it was, you know, helpful, it was helpful. Amen. It's being able to grow up as an adult and tell your mom, thank you for beating me. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. You have to be at a certain level. Of, David did. David said, you know, um, had it not been for the Lord who was on my side. It was good. David said, it was good that I was afflicted. Because you get to a point where you said, I, I realize now. There was a purpose for that. Even if they never realized and God used somebody to hurt me, uh, to allow me to go through a pain, because I wouldn't learn any other way. And they may not see it, and they may never have to see it, but listen, let me tell you something. When you learn something, it doesn't mean the whole world has to learn it with you. They'd be nice if they did, but they're not. That person may never say, I'm sorry. But you can stop that punch from coming through now. Tell me where the punch is coming through. It's me, I get too hurt, and my recovery time is too long. 
And I close with this. So number one, a, a hiding spirit. A hiding spirit. Just, just information hidden. Just, you talking code in generalities. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes people like they come to me for counseling. What's going on? Well, I just feel like I'm just not happy and I just don't know and I feel like I am this. What does that mean? My God, you can't go to a doctor like that. I just feel off. We need to assess. And the assessment should start with you. Now, if you can't, then you go to, of course, he's going to help you. But it start, that's why they ask you all these questions. Do you have a history of this? What kind of pain do you feel? I get fr flustered and frustrated when people say, well, what did the car sound like? Well, I don't know. It doesn't sound right. Well, did it have a clicking sound? Was there a hesitation? Did, you know, is anybody here with me this morning? Right? Say, Lord, help me to be an identifier. Come on, say that. Lord, help me to be an identifier. Because you know what the good news is about that? As soon as you identify it, you can fix it. Let me remind you again as I close. If I can, if I can identify it, if I allowed it, now I know I can stop it and never have to go through that again. I never have to go through that again. Amen. I'll never have to go through that again. I'll never have to fall for, for some dude who's trying to play me, some chick who's trying to play me. I'll never have to fall for some salesman who's trying to rip me off. Anybody here? Don't tell me because if you, have, you ever ask me if I want bacon and cheese and grilled onions and grilled jalapenos, I'm not the one to ask because I want it all. I'm an easy upsell. I'm an easy upsell. They come up to me. And sir, would you like to add a fried onion ring on top of that? Yes. <laughs> what about a fried egg? Yes. I mean, I will take it. For 10 cents more, you can up, you, no, no, for 20 cents more, you can get the large popcorn. I shouldn't already be eating the popcorn I'm eating because my sugar, I'll take it. <laughs> right? Right? I mean, you know, ya que estoy ahí. Right? So we say, right? Pues ya que estoy ahí. You don't want to hear the story behind that one. Number two, when, propo when your proponent gets blurred, <laughs> blurry when friendships supporters get blurry the Lord told me this he said the welcome of the Lord changes all of a sudden that person or your, your proponents are real like hey the welcome you're both Christians but when the like are you for me has changed all of a sudden it's like hey you know what is this a, a cowboy shoot off stand off hey De -de 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 up when before it was like hey what's up the welcome it ain't it ain't the same 